All right, guys, what's going on? This is Ryan with Block Roots. And in this video, I want to talk about futures in traditional markets. I want to talk about um, futures in the crypto market that we're most familiar with. And then I want to finally get to what is behind this trading technologies platform that you will see me share often. And I use this trading technologies platform for my Bitcoin spot trading. All right, I've used it when I traded futures outside of cryptocurrency. It is an institutional grade platform and the fact that retail will have access to it um, without or at a fraction of the cost rather that uh, you would need to pay if you were you know in any other market is uh, tremendous so real quick let's talk about futures okay so futures in traditional markets the purpose okay um, what the function and the actual uh, mechanism is so in traditional markets, our right, futures are a contract to buy or sell an asset at a future date at a specified price. All right, so they are useful to producers, okay, to hedge actual production, and they are also useful to retail. So they're useful to retail for actually taking speculative bets on, you know, in terms of direction for the underlying asset. So you could trade crude, you could trade gold, you could trade futures on the index like the E-mini S&P. You could trade the regular S&P futures. You could trade um, corn futures. All right. But the purpose of futures is to actually benefit the actual person involved in the business of the underlying asset. So when we think of someone who is in corn production, how do they hedge their corn production to ensure that they're protected, protected rather, you know, should anything actually occur in the market that is negative, that might adversely affect their income, their production, and so forth. Well, they would use futures to actually lock in a price, to lock in a contract, all right, to ensure that they are... Um, that this actual um, negative negative event is negative event is actually mitigated for. So that's traditional market futures. Okay, we have people that are trading them directionally for speculative purposes, and then we have a large group of people that are using them to protect themselves. Okay, so producers, for example. Now, the futures contracts that we are familiar with in crypto are not real futures contracts in the sense that um, they offer that, for example, if you are trading, if you are in a um, futures contract for oil and you go all the way till expiration and settlement, all right, if you don't exercise before expiration, all right, before the end of that futures contract, and you are, um, if you're buying oil, for example, if you're longing oil, you actually have to take possession of that oil okay so that oil will be delivered all right so 99% uh, of people that are trading futures are not actually taking delivery but nevertheless that is what happens at the end of the contract now in crypto markets what we're most commonly trading when we're trading futures are perpetual swaps so these are essentially they mimic futures but they don't actually have an expiration all right they don't have the same delivery so when we're trading a perpetual swap, all right, it is based off of the underlying spot price of Bitcoin, but since it's not physically settled, okay, they have to get the underlying spot price from a calculation based on multiple spot exchanges. So what they do is they have oracles, which are multiple spot exchanges. It's an amalgam of these exchanges. And since the actual price of the derivative, since it's trade on leverage is gonna be different from this spot exchange price, all right, or the spot exchange prices, what they do is they create a funding rate mechanism that incentivizes traders to take positions around this price, okay, so around the index price, in order to move it back to the actual underlying spot price at a constant, let's say a constant settlement, right? So every few hours it's settled, and the funding rate makes it so that if the popular trade is long, okay, longs are having to pay this interest or this funding rate on the notional value of their contracts. This incentivizes them to actually close their contracts out. That would move the price down. And it incentivizes traders to take the other side of the, of the trade, okay, because it pays them to do that. And that incentivizes them to open a trade, which moves it back towards that index price in the opposite direction. So it's essentially, it's trying to steer price towards the underlying index price in order to settle at the right price. Now, this is complicated, okay? And this is because they're not actually settled in physical Bitcoin, all right? This is essentially a synthetic margin, synthetic leverage trading, synthetic margin leverage trading instrument. So this is prone to a few things. One, on BitMEX, for example, okay, we have 
uh, market makers that are trading again it is said that market makers are trading against traders so they are trying to liquidate traders all right to um, increase the bitmex fund right so we have that we have settlement risk so the risk that there are a large trader on a spot exchange coordinated with a large trader on the derivatives exchange and what they can do is knowing that the spot exchange all right is a large part of the derivatives price they can manipulate the spot price with a large enough amount of capital to move the price in the derivatives contract, right? So to move the underlying per price. And if they're trying to short, maybe they are selling on the spot to move the price down on their derivatives exchange, all right, to actually um, cash out on that, or maybe they're trying to fill a position. Whatever the case is, they can manipulate the actual futures contract price, or rather the per price from the spot exchange, okay? Because the per price is based around multiple spot exchanges. So it's an index, like I said. So the perpetual swaps also incentivize, okay, the makers, right? And they penalize any type of taker liquidity, all right? So it's important to understand when you're using um, leverage, okay, that if you're having to pay any type of interest or funding rate or um, fee, that this fee is applied to the notional value of the contracts. So in the case of, let's say, you're someone who has a $10,000 account and you're using 10 times leverage, okay, you're not paying the fee or the funding or any of this off of your $10,000. You're paying it off of the notional value of contracts you have, which would be $100,000. So this can be quite expensive. Now, due to this, so due to the funding rate, okay, due to these fees, if you are worried about costs, okay, transaction costs, or if you're someone who just wants to, let's say, keep a trade open for a prolonged period of time, okay, this is extremely detrimental, right? So if you're using a perpetual swap, okay, and you're, you know, your intention is to hedge your position in your spot for a prolonged period of time of over a month, for example, you know, this is extremely costly. So at, let's say at a yearly rate, you know, you could think about over 60%, right, for longs, okay? And for example, during a period of increased volatility or, or in, during a period of, let's say, um, a mania, this can be even over 200%. So you could actually, theoretically, if price moved, um, if price moved sideways long enough and you were paying a funding fee, okay, you could actually liquidate your position. So this decays and eats into your actual capital. So it's not from a cost basis, from, you know, from the perspective of trying to mitigate for this type of risk, whether or not it's the risk of actual price movement or it's the risk of actually losing your capital, all right, due to a fee, you know, this is negative. So futures contracts that are settled in Bitcoin, we don't have to worry about the fee of in and out between stablecoin and Bitcoin. We don't have to worry about the actual settlement, okay? We don't actually have to worry about settlement risk, all right? So we don't have to worry about that manipulation on a spot exchange affecting the actual price of the futures contract, okay? We don't have to worry about uh, the market makers trading against us, all right? And this physically settled futures contracts offer the same benefit that traditional futures offer, all right, traditional market participants, if we're thinking about how miners relate to producers. So if I'm a Bitcoin miner, what do I do to protect, to protect myself, all right, or to project, protect my projected pro, uh, production? Okay, what I can do is if I have access to a physically settled futures contract, I can short the amount of Bitcoin all right, to protect myself, to make sure that, you know, should the market move down to the downside or adversely against me, that I am actually protected and that I can still settle in the actual underlying asset that I do business in, because I'm not interested in the cash, I'm interested in Bitcoin. So this is tremendously useful, not to just retail or speculating, but to the really important group of people that are in crypto, okay, the miners, right? So all of this leads to what I wanted to talk about, which is CoinFlex. Okay, so CoinFlex is the first physically settled Bitcoin futures exchange. Okay, and they offer other contracts as well. So you're not paying a funding fee. Okay, you don't have to worry about settlement risk. All right, the fees are tremendously low. Okay, and you're actually incentivized if you're a market taker and not a market maker. So on other exchanges, you're penalized if you're a market taker. If you're taking liquidity off the book, you're penalized. Okay, so CoinFlex actually has a program that incentivizes you to actually take liquidity. All right, so that's a first. 
So that's through the use of their flex coin. And we'll get into that separately. So the reason why I really gravitated okay, towards CoinFlex when I first saw it, all right, why it piqued my interest, okay, when I'm thinking about what I would recommend to um, other people in the crypto space, being that I came from traditional markets, was because they offered, all right, they had a partnership with trading technologies. So this platform that I'm using right here that I use for traditional markets and that I use for my spot exchange Bitcoin trading is a trading technologies platform. It's an institutional grade platform. And if you want access to it as a retail trader, you are going to be paying a pretty penny. So well over $1,000 a month just to use this platform. Now, I've used it for a while now. So when I saw that it was being used by a Bitcoin or a cryptocurrency uh, exchange, I thought that that was huge. All right, so that said a lot to me. The fact that Trading Technologies, all right, is working with CoinFlex, that meant a lot to me. So it's not just the actual benefits that I mentioned earlier in relation to how uh, physically settled contracts operate, the mechanics of them, all right, how they actually um, protect us, okay? For me, it's actually one of the strong selling points is I have to be honest, is the fact that they're using trading technologies. Now, traditional exchanges will have the basic setup that you know you can expect when you log on to Binance, when you log on to Coinbase. You know, we'll we'll have all of the basics, right? None of the bells and whistles. We'll have an order book. Okay, we'll we'll see the actual offers, we'll see the bids. All right, we'll have some type of market depth. We'll have a times and sales, and we'll have you know a mace. At, at most, we'll have a few indicators and. Um, you know, and that's it. We don't really have access to any type of indicators that are linked to the actual order book. All right, we don't have any order book specific metrics. Okay, and trading technologies. All right, if you're a futures trader, you know, and you're trading um, price and volume, for example, and you want to trade order flow, trading technologies is the actual platform that you're going to be using. All right, for the most part, this is the premier platform that you're going to be using. Now, when I'm trading, I will trade, all right, cumulative volume delta. So the difference between, I have an indicator that you'll see right here. This is cumulative volume delta, and this shows the difference between aggressive buyers and aggressive sellers. All right, so for order flow, this is tremendous. All right, I have the actual ask volume, all right, and the bid volume. So this is great for when you're trying to actually trade support and resistance, and you're trying to establish whether or not we had tremendous amount of support, not just because of structural reasons, but because of actually buyers stepping up, or in the case of resistance, you know, sellers actually stepping down. Now, this also allows you to really um, trade at, you know, click speed, okay? So click speed, right? So there's no real latency. What we can do is we can basically just go right onto the actual order book and place our trade right off of that. So when we're talking about um, certain things that can affect your trading, one of them is absolutely the amount of time that it takes for you to place the order and to actually you know hit the actual buy or sell button and trading technologies makes this um, a very streamlined all right a very fast and efficient process so in my opinion in the near future all right coinflex is likely going to take a majority market share just because of the fact that they just because of the fact that they offer the um, physically settled Bitcoin futures contracts. Now, if I'm a miner, this is what I'm looking for. So I don't want to use, I cannot use a perp to hedge myself from a miner. So if you think about also the fact that um, if you are trading on CoinFlex, you actually can trade your spot and trade the futures. So that's another thing. You could trade spot and trade futures. So I can trade the underlying spot and hedge it on the same exact exchange. Okay, currently, you're not going to be able to do that anywhere else, all right? And if you do have access to some type of margin or leverage trading instrument on a spot exchange, you're going to be paying, again, you're going to be paying in a large amount of interest or a fee associated with that. So you're going to be paying in the form of, rather, a large amount of interest or fees associated with that. Whereas when I'm actually on CoinFlex, I can use, you know, the the contract that settles this month or next month or the, you know, following to actually protect myself by, let's say I'm oh, I am long on the underlying spot, I could just be shorting the future, or I could take a trade that is, you know, a you know cash and carry. So say there's an actual basis between the futures price, all right. So there's typically a basis between a futures price and the underlying spot price. 
what I can do is, in this case, I can hold the underlying spot and I could short the future, okay? So this exchange is brand new, all right? It's not brand new in the sense that it came out this month, but it is a new exchange, all right? They have, in my opinion, they have the tech, all right? They have the tech, they have the team, all right? And they have this tremendous selling point in the form of the one, the fact that they don't have the settlement risk associated with um, the perpetual swaps, okay? And two, it ties right into the um, settlement being in Bitcoin. So I think that this is going to gather a tremendous amount of, of uh, attention, not only from retail traders, but from um, actual miners in the space. All right, so miners, obviously, we have the, the reason why the actual network um, is maintained is because primarily because of the fact that miners exist. And, you know, if they don't have access to actually hedge their production, then this is not a, this is not a, um, a true market in the sense that um, it offers all of these uh, tools to the actual participants to protect themselves. So it's not favoring, you know, just the trader. So this is, in my opinion, moving more towards a traditional market. So in the fact that it has the, the infrastructure, the tools, and so forth, it's moving towards being a more mature and um, a more mature market in general. So that's my opinion, right? So if you want to check CoinFlex out, you know, go on to the, the website, see what it has to offer. I think that in the next few months, this likely just because of these um, these aspects uh, really takes a lot of business from BitMEX. And I hope it does because I, I think that BitMEX um, operates, uh, I won't, you know, I won't use any kind of negative terms, but I'll just say that I don't think they do business right. So we've all heard the rumors. We've all seen the scam wicks at some point. And we know that since it's not, um, it's not based on actual, you know, settlement in bitcoins. That this is an inevitability, actually. So the fact that um, the fact that the way that their actual futures are structured, all right, that implies that this leaves the door open for this possibility. So that's that, guys. All right, uh, this is Ryan with Block Roots. If you, you know, if you're curious curious about this exchange, click the link below. Um, check it out. Right, you're only going to know if you try something. So. If you are, you know, if you're interested in protecting yourself, if you're interested in actually using leverage, um, check out PointFlex. All right, guys, as always, exercise proper risk management and trade effectively.